Hey everybody, <clears throat> sorry, Indiana Magnum again, just working down in the gun room as usual, what else do I do? Wanted to show you this because I just got this and I think it's kind of cool, it goes with my antique gun collection. Uh, I just picked up this uh, little Belgian Bulldog revolver with a folding trigger in uh, 32. It's a 32 short Colt, I believe. I'm guessing. I haven't, you know, done any measurements to confirm that. Uh, but I chambered around and it seemed to fit. So, and a lot of these were in 32 short Colts. So, I'm 99% sure that's what it is. Uh, now, I really think these are a really cool little revolver. They, uh, they're not really well respected in the in the you know gun collecting community because they're you know they're not Colts they're not Smith and Wessons they're not you know German Lugers but uh, they're they're, they're kind of neat because these were a gun that the average the average person could afford uh, which sort of brings them into the realm of you know reality they're not Ferraris they're uh, Toyota Corollas. Everybody can afford one. Uh, so yeah, this one's in, uh, pretty sure it's in 32 short cold. Um, I tried some other rounds here, just, you know, I can show you. You know, you've got your standard uh, 32 uh, Smith & Wesson. And although the projectile seems about the right size, it uh, will, not, will not take the round. Old 32 rim fire, which fits real nice. But um, this isn't a rim fire gun, this is a center fire, so even though it fits nice, it ain't gonna work. 32 long in rim fire, well, it's gonna fit, but it's gonna stick right out the front of the cylinder. It's just, it's too long. So, 32 short Colt. It's perfect. Now, I'm not going to shoot. I am going to shoot this revolver at some point. I got to clean it up first. But I'm not going to shoot these factory loads out of it. I'm going to make some of my own. Uh, this gun was originally these are these are black powder guns. So now it would probably be safe to shoot the smokeless cartridge out of it simply because uh, the manufacturers know that people are going to stick these in old black powder guns because they don't know any better and so they load these down um, but it's an antique I don't want to risk damaging the gun don't want to risk damaging myself so I will reload some in black powder the next couple of days and then I'll do a video shooting this gun um, I, I really think they're they're quite neat. I've got one here. Could be from the same manufacturer, uh, but this one doesn't have the folding trigger. It's a little little smaller, same caliber. Could be uh, a different manufacturer. It's really hard to tell. There were a zillion little Belgian factories back in the late 1800s, uh, early 1900s, spitting out guns like this. Um, they often aren't marked with any kind of manufacturer's uh, logo or name. Uh, you can tell they're Belgium uh, by the proof marks, uh, the little stamps that are stamped in here and there. Um, but again, these were these were every man's gun. Uh, everybody could afford these. They're they're based on the British bulldog uh, designs. Uh, Webley, uh, British company, uh, Webley and Scott. Um, uh, they were they originally started making them, and theirs were better quality. Quality, sorry. If you can find a, a British bulldog um, made by Webley, it's uh, considerably more valuable than these. I just picked this up. I think I paid fifty fifty five dollars for it. Um, if it was a Webley, it'd be in the hundreds of dollars. Uh, last last little Webley I saw like this went for $500. So 
Yeah, Webleys are nice, they're more collectible, but these are neat too. Pretty simple. It's got a loading gate. Put each round in and turn. It's double action or single action. I'm not going to dry fire it. You don't want to dry fire these old guns. They're antiques. The metal's not that great. You don't want to put any more stress on them than you have to. So, single or double action, loading gate. To unload, you got to pull the extractor out, swing it around. Just really kind of funny the way they did this. Swing it around and get it just to the right spot and use this long pin, the extractor, to drive each cartridge out in turn. It really was not intended to be done under any kind of stress. With these revolvers, they generally were five or six shots. Basically, you had your five or six shots to use. You know, if it was a life-threatening life situation, you got your five or six shots and that was it. You weren't expected to get any more shots because loading and reloading was a very slow process. Now, I've never really quite understood this whole folding trigger thing. Like, I understand, okay, that makes it, I guess, a little bit easier to put the gun in your pocket um, and carry it around. But to me, I can't see where that's really very practical. It's still going to get caught on stuff. It's going to get caught on your pants pocket or your jacket pocket as you're trying to put it in. Some of them had little clips to kind of hold the, the trigger in the forward position. This one doesn't appear to have ever had a clip. Um, I mean, really. I don't know. To me, this is a little more... It's a little less safe with a folding trigger, too. There's a lot more chance that that's going to come down. There's no trigger guard. It's going to get caught on something. Now, mind you, it does take an awful... It's an awful stiff trigger pull. It's unlikely it would catch on something and go off by accident, but hey, you never know. Um, gun safety is always number one, folks. Remember that. Gun safety is number one. Uh, but anyway, it's kind of a neat little gun, and I'm going to get it cleaned up. It's, it's reasonably tight mechanically. Um, you always got to be careful when you're uh, messing around with this old stuff. Uh, but it's reasonably tight in reasonably good shape. I think it's safe when I make some mild reloads. Hey, Lorene MS. Oh, don't forget to give me hearts, everybody. I could use hearts. Um, apparently that'll boost me in the search engines, and that's what that's what we need. Hi, Lorene MS. Um, so yeah, I'm going to make some reloads for this gun. Nice mild ones. Don't put any, st any stress on it. I guess I should hold it up a little better. And I'm going to take it to the range after, so I'll do another video on that. But again, I think that's a pretty cool little piece of history. You know, Who knows who carried this around and all the adventures it may have had. You know, Gamblers, street thugs in New York City in 1895. I mean, who knows? You can, you know, or it may have spent its entire life in somebody's you know, shoebox in the top of their closet. You really don't know only guns could talk. Um, oh, another thing I'll point out, uh, this will be interesting maybe for the American viewers, because things are, this is in Canada, and things are a little different. These are prohibited weapons here in Canada. Uh, I have a special license, and I'm allowed to have them, but a lot of people aren't, and you can't get the license anymore. It's grandfathered, so if you've got the license, you can, you can keep the guns, you can get more, you can be involved in the trade, but once your license is gone, you you can't get in on it anymore. So, yeah, these in Canada are prohibited. And that's because they're 32 caliber and they're so small. Uh, in Canada, big handguns, you know, Beretta 92Fs and 44 Magnum revolvers with big long barrels, they're, they're just restricted. But these little guns are prohibited in Canada. Um, Another Canadian law thing. This one has been re-serial numbered. 
don't know how good you can see it, but it's uh, been that's a, that's a new engraving. Um, and that again is just a Canadian law thing. Whenever this gun was registered, the authority uh, at the firearms office who was doing it said, I don't like it. I want a new serial number on there. So they put a new one on. And you really don't have much choice in that. It doesn't matter that it's an antique and it's going to har harm the value. They want a serial number on it. You put a serial number on it. Now this one already had that on it, you can, but it wasn't stamped in very good, so it wasn't very readable. So, anyway, little Canadian trivia there. Um, so that's it for today. That's all I wanted to talk about these, and uh, I'll make up some rounds and I'll take them out to the gun club in the next video, and we'll see how they work. Anyway, Indiana Magnum, signing off. Talk at y'all Oh, promote my book. If you're interested in firearms, check out my book, Ivor Johnson Handguns, 1871 to 1941. You can get it on Amazon.com. It's a cool little book, if I do say so myself. So, check out my book. Talk to you later, folks.